Dr. Janet Quinn. I'm a nurse PhD. I'm a consultant in healthcare for creating habitats for healing and for integral and integrative nursing and medicine and spirituality in health and healing. And I also have a private practice in interspiritual, spiritual guidance and spiritual direction in Lyons, Colorado, where I work with people in person and by phone and Skype. Spirituality is an interesting term to define, and one way of thinking about it in the broadest sense is that there's six, six point something billion people on the planet, six point billion something definitions of spirituality. To get it a little more concise, I think about spirituality as the experience, people's experience of and with something that's bigger than the individual self, so something that's larger or deeper or wider transcendent that really gives direction and purpose and meaning to life. Spirituality and healthcare are, it's a topic that we're talking more about these days. We're finally beginning to recognize that when people are sick or in need of uh, uh, healthcare, it's not just about the body the person being reduced to the status of you know, the body and then the body being reduced to the moral status of machine, but that we're whole human beings, body, mind, and spirit. And so healing then has to be about facilitating something to happen at all of those levels, body, mind, and spirit. So how that works and how that happens, of course, is going to be completely unique and individual to the person. But finding a way to t what I call tend the soul at the same time as we're touching the body is really an important piece of holistic nursing practice and integral, integral or integrative practice by any practitioner. When we talk about curing, for me, I think about that as eliminating the signs and symptoms of disease. And really no more and no less than that. So if you come in with this set of symptoms and then they're gone and we say, oh, you're cured. Healing is about the, the whole person, again, the body, mind, and the spirit. And it's, for me, a process of emergence. It's right relationship at any level, and between and among any of the levels of the human experience. So, for example, if we talk about healing just at the cellular level, bone healing, we're talking about the cells that have been kind of split apart in this fracture, finding a way to come back into right relationship with each other. And those right relationships happen at all the different levels of the human experience. So you can have uh, many experiences, in fact, oftentimes experiences where there isn't going to be curing. That is the physical situation that's created this encounter with the healthcare system is actually not going to be cured. The signs and symptoms aren't going to be relieved. And there can be a tendency at that point to think, oh, there's nothing else that can be done. But that would really be a wrong assumption because even at that moment when it becomes clear that this disease, this illness is not going to be cured, there's always hope and potential for healing, for more wholeness for this person. One of the most underappreciated elements of healing is the full potential of human-to-human, heart-to-heart relationship. It's what I call the healing relationship. It's using the full capacity of human possibility, which is to use my intentionality, my ability to center in the present moment, to open my heart in unconditional love and compassion, to allow that energy of unconditional love and compassion and intention for healing to flow outward to the person that's in need, to imagine, use the power of my creative imagination to see that person as whole and healed at every level, even again if it, if it doesn't necessarily mean that there will be physical cure, but to hold an image of that person in my mind's eye and in my heart of their radiant wholeness, of utter peace, profound um, contentment and connection with self and with source, and then allow that quality of energy to bathe them like a beautiful healing light without any expectations for what will come of it. This is the, the, the possibility of a healing relationship with somebody. 
even when we can't necessarily do anything to change their physical situation. We have a profound capacity for self-healing. It's so huge, the capacity for the system to heal itself, that it's one of the things that has to be controlled for when we do clinical research. So when we're doing clinical research, we call it the placebo effect, the possibility that the person's own mind can make them better. And so that really you know, confounds the research. So we have to figure out a way to get that out of the equation because it's so powerful that it actually ruins the data. So my perspective is when we're actually doing clinical work and not necessarily focusing on research, that's our job. Our job is to help the person actualize their own innate natural tendency towards healing and wholeness, which is hardwired into every cell of our being. There's an enormous interest these days in creating what's called optimal healing environments, and thank goodness we're doing that, looking at every element of the environment. Florence Nightingale was very interested in these kinds of things, looking at light and sound, color, texture, all of those variables. And so they can all contribute to an optimal healing environment. My perspective is that, in fact, the most powerful part of the healing environment is actually the relationships that happen in that environment. We can have all the beautiful art in the world on the walls and beautiful music playing in the background, but if we are being cared for by people who are angry, <laughs> our healing is going to be diminished. And if we are ourselves um, caught in negativity, that pollutes the environment, our own healing, our inner healing environment. So, so attending to the quality of relationships, attending to the state of consciousness that we're bringing into this environment, either as a provider or as somebody that's trying to do their own healing, attending to their own interior environment, is actually a critical part of creating an optimal healing environment. It's really important to know, as the recipient of care, what's important to you, A, and then B, to communicate that. So let's say that you, you find yourself in a situation where you do require surgery, and, and this is, this is, this is a, a, an informed decision made based on information shared with your provider. If it's important to you that there be a particular quality of relationship uh, between you and the surgeon and before you go in, then you need to talk to the surgeon about that. People can create their own experience of the operating room experience by simply communicating to the nurses, will you please take a moment and stand here with me and get present and can we ask for guidance? Can we ask for healing? Can we ask together for the best possible outcome? If you don't communicate it, how will the provider know? And then sometimes Healthcare providers want to be able to provide those kinds of experiences for patients, but they don't want to impose their own belief systems and their own way of doing things onto patients. And so sometimes all it takes is, is, is an invitation to the patient letting the provider know, this would be welcomed by me. I would welcome it if you would participate with me as a whole person. I would welcome it if we could talk just for a minute about the spiritual implications of this for me, how I'm looking at this, and engage your providers in that dialogue. Thank you.